To Ray Willis, District. Dear Ray, in exactly 55 minutes, I will be dead. Murdered. First of all, let me explain. I find myself completely sober, reasonably sane, and not at all surprised. It started back in World War II, during the Iwo Jima campaign. I was a captain in the Marine Corps. As you know, every captain needs a top sergeant. Well, I really had the best. His name was Joe Leeds. Hitting the Iwo beachhead was like running into a living hell. I guess I got a little careless. In saving my life, Joe was hit. He carried a bullet so close to his lung, surgery was impossible. During the time the medics patched us up, we became great friends. After the war, I watched him build a home. I watched him become successful. We were closer than and most brothers. One afternoon, six months ago, I sent for Joe. I knew I was going to break his heart. And all I could think about was whether it wouldn't have been better for both of us if he had allowed me to die on that beach that day. You know, Craig, you're the only guy in town that could get me out this time of day. But I was coming over to see you anyway. Oh? Yeah. There's a new housing development going up over at Piedmont. What do you think about buying a corner lot and picking up a new market? Might be an idea. What's the matter with you, boy? You look like you had a problem that was too heavy to carry. It almost is, Joe. Well, after all, we've been through it. Can't be too serious. Maybe talking it out will help. It's going to mean throwing 15 years of friendship right out the window. Well, if it's a real friendship, it won't bend easy. Okay. Are you happy being married to Myra? And Joe, don't tell me it's none of my business. Oh, I don't know. Happy is a word that means a lot of things. It's a state of being. I never asked myself. But I got a beautiful wife, a lovely home, good business. Guy can't expect me. I, I guess being grateful is as good as being happy. Not really, Joe. Perhaps you haven't realized how little time you've been spending at home. How many evenings you've given to the business. Myra is a fine woman, Joe. When she married you, she was in love. But no one wants to be alone all the time. Now she'd like to do something about it. Oh, I see. She told you to talk to me. Did she ask you to represent her, too? It was more my idea than hers. I don't follow you. I don't know how to say it without making it sound cheap. People meet with no thought of being anything but friends. Circumstances throw them together. Then they discover in each other many mutual interests. They begin to anticipate their next meeting, and then the next one, until finally one day they they both realize they're very much in love. OK, don't dress it up. Who's the guy? I'm in love with her, Joe. I want to marry her. That's the way it is. And it's the most difficult thing I've ever had to say to anyone. Are you sure, Craig? Are you sure you know what you're doing? I'm in love with her. What do you want me to do? I'd like Myra to go away, get a divorce. You know, Craig, I've always had a lot of respect and admiration for you. Leveling with me like this has taken a lot of guts. Like I said, a real friendship doesn't bend easy. This. 
You kind of knocked the wind out of me. I Give me a couple of days of kicking around, will you? to walk away. We did everything we could not to let it happen. That doesn't make today any easier. I never wanted to hurt Joe. I didn't think I could possibly fall in love with anyone else. But I have. Craig, darling, I'm not ashamed of my feelings for you. I'm not afraid of the world knowing the truth. I don't believe what we have is wrong. Don't spoil it, Craig. I just dropped by to tell you Mr. Swell Wedding, Joe. Faye was a real pretty bride. <laughs> Funny thing, you were there the night she was born. I kind of hoped you'd beat her tonight when I gave her away. Well, I had a million things to do, Lou. I just hope the kids will be happy. Oh, is there a cinch? You never saw two people better suited for each other. Tops even mom and me. Well, I know, but sometimes even the best things have a way of going sour. Joe, what's wrong? What makes you think there's something wrong? You can't fool me. Just the other day when I was in here with the beef about the branch store, you hardly even listened to me. It looked like you were a thousand miles away. Ever since then, you've been moping around like, like something was bothering you bad. You know, Lou, doing the right thing isn't the easiest thing in the world. You gotta look deep inside of you. Be real honest with yourself. Well, for the past few days, that's just what I've been doing. Looking down deep inside of me. Looking for the right answer, and I finally found it. it. Sounds like an important decision. It is. And a tough one, too. It'll probably change my whole life. Myra's, too. Something wrong between you and Myra? Well, I don't think anything could be worse. Joe, believe me, every married couple has their ups and downs. Even Mom and me have had some bad moments. But, but honest, if you just have patience, everything usually works out fine. Sometimes, Lou. Sometimes. Look, do me a favor. Will you mail us on your way home? Yeah, sure thing. Hello, Myra. Just wanted to make sure you were home. I'm going to be home early. I've been thinking about something I want to talk to you about. I'll be there in about 15 or 20 minutes. Just remember, Joe, everything usually works out. Quit living in a dream world, Lou.
everybody in there. That's right. Ready for us to take over? Sure. Chalk him off, dust the place good, and McMillan's already photographed most of the room. What does it look like, Lieutenant? According to the lady, we got a breeze. She said she shot her husband in self-defense. <laughs> How come everybody always shoots everybody else in self-defense? Now, Mrs. Lees, I, uh, I think we got everything pretty well straightened out. Would you mind going over that first part for me just once more? Well, I... I was sitting in bed reading when Joe came in. He was wet. He looked furious. I, I couldn't imagine what was wrong. He, he just walked over and pulled me out of bed as if he was drunk or, or crazy or something. Threw me against the dresser. Said he was going to kill me. He started for me again. Then I opened the drawer and took out the gun and shot him. He just stood there and looked at me. Then he fell. It was terrible. It's going to be all right. You just rest there for a minute. All right, let's get off the phone. You know this place is off limits until the lab's through with it. We dust it before you, Lieutenant. Right. And Ellen, I want those papers drawn up first thing in the morning. No, I'll be there before you. I'm going directly to the office and police headquarters. Sergeant, I want this section of the room covered from A to Z. Several shots of that nightstand and this dresser here. Get in close. You know the kind of stuff I want. Well, cover the place like here. Planning on a big day in court? The guys did. That makes it a big day in court. Any reason to doubt it was self-defense? Enough to hold her on suspicion of murder. Then it's up to you legal eagles to pick her apart. Well, incidentally, if you want to talk to your client, have at it, because I'm taking her downtown in about two minutes. I don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. What don't you understand? The police. All these questions. Those men in there taking pictures, fingerprints. I'm afraid, Craig. Just routine, ma'am. Nothing to be alarmed about. But Lieutenant Bradley's questions haven't been routine. They don't believe me, do they? Tell me the truth. Lieutenant Bradley plans to hold you on suspicion of murder. What am I going to do? How can I make them believe? That'll be my job, darling. Why did he try to kill me? Why couldn't he understand? Myra. I love Joe as much as anyone could. And I thought I knew him. But Joe's actions weren't caused by sudden anger. He had several days to think about what he was going to do. Had he been successful, it would have been premeditated murder. I'm afraid, Craig. Don't be. I know it's going to be difficult for him. Just remember, I love you. I still mean it. Moonlight was invented just for you. Lady Desk. Ray, here's your lead line. District Attorney asked for Myra Leeds' life. He says he'll prove she killed Joe Leeds in cold blood. I think we'd get a new twist to the story if we quoted Carlson. He claims it was an attack of violence, carefully staged and executed. I tell you, no other woman could interest me anymore. Yeah, it's gonna be a beaut. This gal's good copy. If Willis was bugging anybody besides Carlson, I think this Leeds woman wouldn't have a prayer. Uh, court's back in session. I'll call rewrite in time for the three-star edition. Right. Oh, that was just the guys. Yeah, court's back in session again. No, I don't have to be in there. You can't take pictures in the courtroom. You were the first officer to report at the scene of the murder. 
Yes, sir. My partner and I were cruising that area when we got the call. Will you please tell the jury exactly what you found? Well, Mrs. Leeds and Mr. Carlson were there when we arrived. Mr. Carlson said Mrs. Leeds had called him, and as soon as he got there, he called the police. Were there signs of struggle? No, sir. Mrs. Leeds wasn't marked or bruised in any way? Not that I could tell. Did you see anything about her clothing or her person or anything at all that indicated that there had been a struggle? No, sir. Thank you. That's all. Mr. Carlson? No questions. Sergeant Hill, you are connected with the crime lab. That's right. And did you note that it was raining the night of the murder? Yes, sir. Would you please tell the court how that affected your findings? May I have that picture, please? This dark spot was one of the first things we checked out. It's water. Probably came from Joe Lee's clothing. From the way we can piece it together, he stood right there and didn't make a move until he fell from the shot. In other words, your deduction is that there could not have been a struggle. I object. This question calls for a conclusion of the witness. Sustained. Did you find any water spots anyplace else in the room? No, sir. Thank you. Sergeant Hill, what makes you so certain Joe Leeds did not move closer to Mrs. Leeds than the area of the water stain? To wet a wool rug through that way would require quite a concentration of water. That means the victim would have to stand the spell. But Mrs. Leeds said that he came right in and over to her. Just answer the question, Sergeant. The prosecuting attorney is well able to argue his case. Sorry. Right. What about some of the other people in that room? They could have dripped water on that rug, could they not? We checked that out. The rain had stopped by the time the first police unit had arrived. But it hadn't stopped when I arrived. Couldn't I have stood in one spot long enough to dampen that rug? I guess you could have. Thank you, that's all. And then she stated that he knocked her against the dresser. It was then that she opened the drawer, took out the gun, and shot him. Ms. Leeds said the gun was in the dresser drawer. Yes, sir. Did she point out where Mr. Leeds was at the time she shot him? She said that he was rushing toward her from where they had struggled beside the bed. Specifically, where by the bed? On the left side, where Mrs. Leeds was lying. Did your investigation bear its conclusion? No, sir. Please explain why. Bottles on the dresser, you know, perfume and the like. And had he knocked her against the dresser, well, surely some of these bottles would have been overturned. Lieutenant hmm. Bradley, is this one of the photographs you ordered taken? Yes, sir, it is. Now, do you see anything, anything at all disturbed on or about that dresser? No, sir, nothing. Go on, Lieutenant. Well, uh, according to Mrs. Leeds, the spot where Mr. Leeds was standing uh, at the time she shot him was about 10 feet from where he fell. Wasn't that possible? No, sir. According to the coroner's report, the victim was shot through the heart and died instantly. In other words, Joe Leeds would have had to walk 10 feet after he was dead. That's about it, sir. You witness. Lieutenant Bradley, how many years have you been on the police force? Twenty-two. And during that time, would you say you witnessed a number of people suffering from hysteria? i say so, yes. And what would you say were the first signs of hysteria? Oh, uh, incoherency, unable to make a decision, sort of a lapse in common sense. And would you say it was likely for a woman who just killed a man to be suffering from hysteria? Why, yes. And would it not be within the realm of possibility for this woman to mistake her left from her right? Come to a snap judgment of distance and direction that would be entirely incorrect. 
possibility. And wouldn't it be possible for a woman in such a state of hysteria to think she was thrown against the dresser when in reality she was thrown against the nearby wall? Well, she could be, but... That is all. Thank you. had a pretty social day. Three visitors. One was from a newspaper. Lucas Arian came over to tell me not to worry. And Carl Holt, he's an artist, an old friend, wondered if there was anything he could do. Craig, is it going badly for me? 